Alright guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a tree view and a tree view is a special type of list in JavaFX because what you can do is you can actually take your list items and arrange them in a hierarchy and this is actually an example of a tree view right over here and basically like I said what you can do is you can have your list items and then you can pretty much make sub items and I'll give you guys a terminology real quick of course whenever you create your main tree you always need a root so every tree has one single root this is pretty much the main trunk or the main overall tree itself just think of it like that so pretend this external libraries thing isn't even in here I don't want to confuse you guys so in this example our root would be Bucky now once we have our root we can start adding branches to it so one branch would be idea one branch would be out one branch would be source so again they just uh, you know referenced everything kinda named it like a tree you have a root and then you can have a bunch of branches on it and of course your branches can have other branches or you can just have you know um, a single item on it and whenever you have an item that doesn't have any children it's technically called a leaf but you know I don't want to confuse you guys too much a lot of terminology so let's go ahead and get started you guys are gonna see what I'm talking about so the first thing we need to do is we need to create an overall tree view and what data do we want to stick on the tree well how about a bunch of strings and I'm just gonna name this tree so this is pretty much gonna be the overall tree the all encompassing everything so the next thing let me just add it right under here 50 alright alright so now I wanna go ahead and set up all of the items including the root in any branch that I'm gonna make now all of those are just tree items these are pretty much generic um, stuff that you can add on your tree and of course those are strings as well so again remember I told you guys we have our main root which is our overall trunk that we're gonna be sticking our branches on and then we can just have some branches and I'll just say I have uh, for this demo I'll just have two branches and whenever you expand it instead of you know Java files I'll just say a list of like my favorite items so like corn ice cream uh, the walking dead and Megan's will be like glitter makeup girly stuff you know just a real simple demo so again we're gonna make a Bucky and Megan branch and we're gonna be sticking these on the root so let's go ahead and set up the root first so for the root all we have to do is we have to set this equal to a new tree item now we don't need to do anything fancy to this since all this roots gonna do is it's pretty much just gonna be a container for all of our branches so we don't have to like um, you know like I said do anything fancy the one property that I do want to change is set expanded and set that equal to true and all this is going to do is whenever our program first starts I'm gonna set everything equal to expanded and that just means your program can first start with everything collapsed like this I'm just gonna have everything expanded by default so you know you guys know what expanded means alright so what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna be building the Bucky branch and the Megan branch now whenever you're building a branch to your tree it's actually really easy you make an item and then you say what do you want its parent to be so for example production right here the parent would be out Bucky right here the parent would be production main the parent would be Bucky and whenever you have two items kind of in the same location those are called either siblings and whenever or you can say like um main dot class is the child of Bucky so this is the parent this is the child and these two are siblings so you know this is all just really terminology but I don't wanna you know confuse you guys and instead of having to rewrite the same code over and over I'm gonna show you guys how to do this really easily what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new method called make branch now this is gonna take two parameters the first one is what do you want the name of the item to be so you see whether it's a parent or a child they all have names source main who is lookup bucky iml so this is just the name of your list item and the second one is 
what is the parent of it? So I'm going to make this root. Now notice, every single one of these items, they all have parents. Not all of them have children. For example, who is lookup? This doesn't have a child, but they all have a parent. You see that? So what I'm going to do is, like I said, make a method, and it's pretty much just going to make all of these branches for you really quick. So again, Bucky and Megan, they're going to be our two main branches. They're just going to stick right on the root. And now we can just add a bunch of items to Bucky. So I'll say, um, so one of my favorite things is the new Boston. And the parent, of course, would be Bucky. And let me just add two more items as well. So the new Boston, uh, YouTube like YouTube and uh, what else chicken now we can do the same thing for Megan except we need to change all these to Megan so Megan 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 and only add two items for her so what is Megan like she probably likes I don't know glitter and she probably likes makeup. All girls like makeup. All right. So now we have our pretty much hierarchy as we can visualize it right now. We're going to have our main root. And then we're going to have another branch called Bucky. And whenever we expand it, it's going to show my three favorite items. And whenever we expand Megan, it's going to show her two favorite items. So after that, we can actually start putting the entire tree together. So say create tree. And let me scroll down a little bit. All right. So tree, remember, we declared it way up here. It's our overall main encompassing everything is equal to new tree view. And the one parameter that you need is the root. So remember, all trees need a main trunk, a main root. And ours is just named root. Now, after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tree and I'm going to say set show root equal to false. Because remember, this root, it doesn't um, really show anything important. It's just a container for all the good stuff. So if we didn't um, throw this line of code in here and we just set show root equal to true, then we would need to expand root before we saw Bucky and Megan. And it would pretty much be a waste of time because why would we want to make the user expand this every single time just to get to this stuff? You know, an extra step that they don't really need. Now the last thing that we need to do in order to actually display this on the screen is we call layout and we add it a little bit differently than other items that we have been adding. We call get children add tree. So this is going to stick on the screen but remember we didn't set up that method to make our branches yet. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And whenever we create our branches, again, what we're doing is we're pretty much just going to add all of these items to whatever branch we're trying to create. So public tree item string make branch. So again, our branches, of course, are tree items. Everything on our tree is an item. So we're going to make one of these branches and return that item. So again, whenever we make the branch, as we could see, it took two parameters. The first one is what is the text that you want up here for your list item. And the second one is what is the parent. So I'll just say string title and tree item parent. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we pretty much need to take that title and create a new item. So just uh, you know, take the new Boston, make it its own list item, YouTube make it its own list item, and chicken make that its own list item. So again, this is a tree item, everything in your trees an item, string, and I'll just uh, call it an item. Go to a new tree item, I accidentally hit cap locks. Yes, I did. Title. So that's going to take the first value, whatever we pass in, glitter, makeup, chicken, and it's going to make it a new list item. And also, another thing that I want to do is I want to take item, set expanded, and set this equal to true. Because remember, the first 
time we're going to use this method for each branch, we're just going to be sticking it on the root. For example, Bucky is going to have sub items. So by default, I'm just going to have all of these expanded and I already, already talked to you guys about why that is. Now, the next thing I want to do is this. We're pretty much going to go through and each of these items, we're going to want to stick on its main parent branch. So the parent, get children, add item, boom, just like that. In our tree, or excuse me, our branch is now built at this point. So return item, and that's going to return the branch. So, <coughs> well, there you go. All right. So now that is it. Let's go ahead and run this and check it out. So everything is expanded. Again, our root, let me show you guys. See, look at it right now, how it's set up pretty much as we expected. I'll show you guys what happens if we don't react. So if we don't have um, set show root equal to false, you see how we have an empty root and then we pretty much need to expand it to get to all our good stuff. That is why I decided to um, hide that kind of, you know, a waste of time for the user. So anyways, what we did is we made a tree, set up our branches, and then we made a cool little method that we can just go through and start building our branch item by item. Now, there's no really logic or, you know, behind the scenes cool functionality taking place at this point. So what we're going to be actually doing is this. I'm going to set it up where you can actually click one of these items and it's going to print out right here. Now we have the problem that we had with the drop down list where it doesn't emit any action. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to stick a listener on each of those items. So in order to do that, we can just put it right under whenever we're done building the tree. We just call tree get selection model selected item property. So for each item on that tree, what we can do is we can add a listener to it. And all this listener is going to do is it's going to pretty much be kicked off whenever you click the item. So you guys already know how to do this. It's going to pass in three parameters, the old value. in the new value and again what this lambda is pretty much a shorthand way of making a function your parameters go right here and your body goes on the right hand side and if you just have a single line of code then you just type it like that but I'm gonna have a couple lines in here so make sure to stick them in curly braces and all I'm gonna say is this if the new value in other words if the item that they selected is not equal to null then just print it out. So system out print line and the value of that item is just the new value get value. All right. So now I think everything looks good. Run it and check it out. So by default we have Bucky selected. That's why I printed out Bucky, the new Boston, YouTube, chicken. You can even click Bucky again. It'll print out Bucky, Megan, Glitter, Makeup. And if you ever collapse one of these, then it's not going to print out because you didn't select it. But you can also collapse it by double clicking it. And whenever you do that, it counts as a selection. So, you know, I just want to point that out. But there you go. Um, you know, a lot of terminology and a lot of weird things to set it up. But pretty much all of the hard work takes place in this method. The rest is just easy, cheesy, beautiful cover girl. All right. Got this makeup stuck in my head now. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. And all of this code is going to be on my GitHub page. So every time you make a tree, you're not going to feel like typing all this. Just go over to my GitHub page, copy it, plop it in your program. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Like I said, see you later.